This is the Hot Fish series from the University of Stirling. Hello and welcome to the Hot Fish podcast series. Today I'm talking to Wesley Malcor, a PhD student who's been working on the Green Intensification of Aquaculture in Europe project, or GAIN, which has been funded by the EU Horizon 2020 programme. One aspect of his work has been looking at the whole fish from a nutritional perspective, that is to say looking at all the byproducts for their micronutrient content after commonly farmed fish are filleted. Much of this is often wasted. So Wesley, how much has been lost rather than consumed? Thank you for the introduction. Uh, a large proportion of the fish farmed in Europe is discarded, and this can be sometimes up to 50% of the whole fish. However, uh, this is dependent on the consumption habits. Uh, generally speaking, uh, the north of Europe prefers fillets, uh, while the south of Europe prefers the purchase of whole or gutted fish. And of course, this has an impact on the availability uh, of byproducts uh, at the processing stage. And some literature suggests that certain byproducts um, have interesting nutritional characteristics. So understanding the nutritional value of these byproducts could create uh, processing and utilization incentives. And therefore the main aim of this study was to characterize the nutritional content of the common processing byproducts, uh, such as heads, frames, trimmings, skin and viscera. Uh, of the five important fin fish species farmed in Europe, such as uh, Atlantic salmon, European sea bass, gilded sea bream, common carp, and also turbot. So your study looked at the levels of the fats that are good for our health, and by that I mean the omega-3 hoofers, the DHA and EPA, mainly found in fish, including in the various byproducts left after processing to produce the fillet. Okay, so I can understand why we should be thinking about using them more efficiently. But Wesley, in what ways does this also benefit the environment? Reducing waste reduces environmental impacts uh, in a number of ways. But sustainability analysis of agriculture has typically ignored the fate and value of processing byproducts. And because of the nutrient content, fish byproducts have applications in human food, livestock, uh, as well as pet food. And other byproducts, such as skin, for example, shows potential as fish skin leather uh, in the fashion industry. So, using fish byproducts therefore replaces the needs for uh, virgin resources in these processes, reducing the overall impact of their production on the environment. And uh, this potentially puts European agriculture at the heart of a circular economy, where we where we don't just consider uh, sustainable agriculture on its own, but rather integrate it with other types of food and other processing. What were the major findings from the lab analysis, Wesley? So, fillet yields of these major farmed European species uh, range from around 30% to less than 60% of the harvested weight. So this means basically that between 40 and 70% has been wasted or only achieved a very low value. Certain byproducts, such as the heads, frames, trimmings, and skin from Atlantic salmon, European sea bass, gilthead sea bream, uh, but also turbot frames, showed interesting nutritional characteristics for direct use in human food. Some byproducts of some species are particularly rich sources of valuable lipids, such as the viscera of the European sea bass, but also most salmon byproducts, especially salmon trimmings. So the ones which are uh, unattractive for use in food directly, but have a low ash content but interesting nutritional properties, such as viscera, could be directed to animal feed. And this also accounts for other byproducts, where the extraction of valuable fats is less productive, uh, but where they have other valuable uh, micronutrients, which makes them uh, interesting for use as marine ingredients in animal feed. And sometimes uh, non-food uh, reuse options might be more valuable. For example, uh, skins uh, will probably have more uh, economic potential as inputs for the fashion 
cosmetic and the pharmaceutical industry. How does this study support the sustainable growth of European aquaculture and, and what are the implications for climate change? Using the whole fish uh, and increasing the edible portion reduces the overall greenhouse gas emissions. It allows the industry to grow but also to diversify its uh, product portfolio without using more resources. And this is crucial and in line with the Sustainable Development Goal 12, uh, responsible consumption and production. And uh, potentially aquaculture, uh, through its reuse of byproducts back into the food chain, uh, can become a net producer of marine ingredients and in turn uh, reducing the impacts on ocean ecosystems. So if this approach shows so much potential, why are we not using the whole fish at the moment? That's a, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, uh, an important barrier are uh, consumer perceptions. Uh, that's just, just one of them. Uh, it is crucial to change consumer preferences towards uh, processed seafood so that uh, byproducts uh, accumulate at the processing stage level so they can be uh, it's easier to reuse them. Uh, additionally, uh, infrastructure and legislative barriers prevent utilization. I have to be more specific here in terms of, of food safety. Uh, investments are required to meet food grade standards. And um, additionally, and this one is more uh, applicable to the smaller processing facilities, uh, approaches to economically stabilize and store smaller quantities of byproducts produced by scattered processing plants uh, are, are required, this, uh, this, need, this is crucial. Uh, however, on the other side, probably investments in larger processing facilities that allow investments in uh, separation and stabilization of the byproducts uh, are the, the future. Uh, another challenge is the nutritional variability of the byproducts, which can have a significant uh, impact on the risk involved in, in using them in, in feed, for example. So overall, our study showed the different nutritional profiles of the byproduct fractions, indicating that the byproduct separation could definitely offer better opportunities to maximize value addition, but also uh, nutritional efficiency. So this could create uh, processing and utilization incentives, which could enable the agriculture industry um, to diversify uh, its, its product portfolio, but uh, more importantly, uh, using marine resources uh, more efficiently. Uh, consequently, uh, increasing the agriculture output in terms of volume and value uh, without using more resources, uh, showing a perfect example of uh, sustainable growth. Thanks, Wesley, for those insights into how we should think twice about throwing away the leftovers when we process fish and how by considering such byproducts, actually as co-products, we can support a circular economy approach. It only leads me to thank our game partners in this work, the EU Horizon 2020 programme who funded it, and to you for listening. Until next time, goodbye. This podcast has been produced at the University of Stirling's Institute of Aquaculture with financial assistance from the Belmont Forum on Climate and Health. Thank you for listening.